Hey equestrians and welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing a video all about how I get Peppa's skin super shiny. This is one of the questions I get asked so frequently on my Instagram and everything, all my other social media platforms, is how do you get Peppa so shiny? The other question I get asked a lot is what breed is she? Unfortunately I don't know the answer to that question. Um, she's just down as a cob in her passport, um, so I don't know where her build or her looks come from, but I can tell you how I get her looking so shiny and how you can get a super shiny pony too. So let's get into the video. Okay you guys, there are three main things I'm gonna talk about today that will help get your horses glowing. <laughs> so the first thing is feed, the second thing is exercise, and the third thing is grooming. So let's get into the details. So first I'm gonna to talk to you about feeding, and this is, I've been on some journey with feeds and peps, I will tell you now. When I first got peps, she had too much protein in her diet, meaning that she had protein lumps everywhere. And her coat in general was just kind of really dull, really dusty, and her skin was really grimy and clogged up with dirt and stuff. Feeding has been a bit of a journey for us. Um, I'm now at a place where I'm happy with her feed and I think she looks really good. She's working well in terms of exercise and stuff, so I'm really pleased with her at the moment. And that's why I feel like I'm in a position to talk about this now. So the first thing that I would like to talk about that I personally feed is linseed. So some kind of oil or, um, a supplement that encourages the natural oils in your horse's coat and skin to come out naturally. For this I actually uh, feed turmeric extra and the extra part is linseed and this is the uh, sort of bit of her feed that replenishes those natural oils. So yeah, some kind of oil or something like linseed that you can get like this in within another supplement or you can get it micronized or in little pellets as well so there's different ways that you can feed them feeding really is a minefield and i'm not the person to talk to about what you should feed your horse i'm only going off what i feed pepper and what works for her a lot of companies now um do free waybridge sessions for say if you've got 10 or more people who want to get involved you get a free waybridge session and they will weigh your horse talk to you about their workload and everything and they will give you a feed that suits them i have had this done with pepper it was quite a few years ago now but um she's really on such a basic feed now she gets denji high fi molasses free it's a really basic chaff I don't feed her much of this, it's kind of just to bulk out with the balancer, which is the other uh, part of her feed. I think a good balancer is actually quite important, or at least if it's not a balancer, some kind of supplement of vitamins and minerals that just replaces those vitamins that get lost or that the horse may not necessarily be getting, just to make sure they're getting the right amount and stuff because that all contributes. So that is the first section. Feeding, I think, is really important because what you feed your horse will ultimately come out in other ways so yep she's on very 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 basic feed it's the linseed that is my magic uh the magic key if you will okay so the next thing i'm going to talk about is exercise and exercise is important because it helps to get the horse's blood flowing get the pores open and when the pores are open that's your opportunity to get the dirt and the grime out of the coat and everything and that will help again pushing the natural oils out because if the skin is, and the pores are all blocked up the natural oils are not going to come through. I have noticed a big difference in Peppa's skin whenever I've been in a position where I'm not able to ride her. When I broke my arm back in 2017, I was unable to ride for a long time. I sort of groomed her, but not to the best of my ability. I'll talk to you more about my grooming routine next, but I did notice a huge difference. The only thing that was lacking in her usual routine was exercise and I noticed her skin getting worse. She would break out and stuff and get the protein lumps and things again. She was gaining weight because she wasn't uh, being worked which obviously isn't ideal. But last year when I was pregnant um, Peps actually had and still has a part learner who I'm very grateful for and who rides her beautifully. She has kept the workload up throughout my pregnancy so she was still being worked roughly three to four times a week and her coat has 
still looked super shiny and super lovely. My Lona obviously does look after her grooming wise as well. She does a, an amazing job, honestly. She looks after her just like I would. So I am very, very lucky to have such a wonderful person learning pips. And at the moment during lockdown, it is so useful and handy to me to have her helping me out because you know, having a three month old baby and a horse is hard work. And I'm glad Peps can still get the exercise because she enjoys her work. So yeah, through experience, exercise has been really important for Peps and ultimately looking after her coat health. And the last thing I'm gonna talk to you guys about is grooming. Grooming is something that I am very passionate about. I think a lot of people who follow me on Instagram and stuff will know how passionate I am about grooming because I talk about it all the time. They will also know about the products that I'm gonna to talk to you about in this video. But it's not all about products. It is really about the process of grooming. So a good groom shouldn't just be a quick flick with a brush. To really get the natural oils coming out, you wanna really get in there and give them a, like a good massage almost. And I would say a good groom takes probably about an hour. And obviously like in this day and age, you wouldn't, you wouldn't necessarily have an hour to, well, do you know what actually? Considering it's lockdown and most of us have nothing to do, now is the time to try this out <laughs> because some of you guys will have a bit more time on your hands. So I'll show you the process that I go through when I'm grooming and I don't do it every day because like I say, it takes a long time, but at least once or twice a month I think is good. Bathing is something that I feel strongly about. <laughs> Overwashing, I think, does wash out the natural oils. And uh, yeah, the ultimate best way to get a shine is through proper grooming. Call me old fashioned. <laughs> I only really wash peps before a show, or if it's like hot or whatever, it's quite nice for her to have a good bath. She hasn't had a bath in a while. <laughs> because there's no shows on. I think I bath I last bathed her last summer. Um, but yeah, for the most part, it's just grooming. I absolutely swear by my exclusive Haas brushes. I love these brushes to pieces. I think I bought them back in 2016 or 2017. So I've had them three to four years. They have stood the test of time. I use them every day with her and they still look great. The other product that I love to use with every uh, groom is my Shapley's Magic Sheen, which I get from the main hub. Absolutely love the main hub. I work quite closely with Deborah, who if you watch my Hickstead vlog, I'll try and put a link in here if I can figure out how to do it. Uh, if you watch my Hickstead vlog, she is in there. She is such a lovely, lovely person to talk to. And uh, yeah, we work quite closely together and stuff. The other thing that I really like to do, mostly through the, like, Predominantly, I'd say through the winter because like summertime is better for bathing and stuff if you are gonna bath But I do try to do it all year round is hot clothing And this is something that I don't think many people know about or do anymore again quite an old-fashioned thing But I love to hot cloth and I use my Shapley's number two heavy oil for this It just adds to those lovely natural oils uh, in the skin and the curls and everything and this number two heavy oil is actually really good for like a last minute shine before you go in the show ring as well. So there you go, <laughs> that's another little tip for you guys. But yeah, I'm gonna go through my grooming routine now so you can see kind of start to finish how I would use my brushes and everything. And I hope this is helpful. So yeah, let's get into it. Okay guys, so I'm gonna take you through my grooming routine. This is something that I don't do every day. Um, I would at least do it once a month because it really just gets all the natural oils coming up on your horse's coat. The first thing I always start with is a curry comb, just simple curry comb, and really get into the skin. It helps to get all the hair out, helps to lift all the dust. As I say, get all the oil flowing. So that's my step one. So now I start with my exclusive Haas brushes. The I have the dark bay set because Peps is the dark bay. The very first brush I use is the Shimmel, which is like a dandy brush basically. The bristles are really hard. So this just starts to get everything going. It gets quite deep into the coat and starts bringing everything through. And I also use my Shapley's Magic Sheen. It truly is magic. So yeah, I start with those two. The other thing that's really important is when you are grooming, really make sure you get into the coat like don't just flick over like you really want to get behind yourself and push into the skin but as you're doing it you want to swipe and clean your brush with well i use my curry comb so yeah you swipe clean your brush swipe clean your brush and that just keeps 
the dust from settling in your brushes and then you don't have to wash them as often. So let's go. Next up is the parkour brush. There you go. That's what that looks like. Is the Cavalier. You can see how I'm really pushing with all my weight and not just, it should be a workout for you guys <laughs> as well as a nice pleasant massage for yours. Now we have this one, not even going to attempt to pronounce this. <laughs> And last but certainly not least is my absolute favourite brush. This is the Diva and it's a lamb's wool. It's really lovely and soft and that gets every last speck of dirt off your horse. Particularly good for shows like just to get that last finishing glow on your horse. <laughs> it's brilliant. I love this brush so much. You should be inside, it's lockdown. What are you doing? <laughs> I hope you have enjoyed this video. I hope it's been useful. Um, these are just tips from my point of view, my experience with Pepper and the things that have worked for her. I know there are some people who say that they just get a quick flick over and they're shiny. Good for you. <laughs> Unfortunately, just like people, I guess, you know, some people have better skin than others. It's the same for horses. It's the same for dogs as well. Like I've had a dog that had really bad skin issues as well. So not everyone is gonna be able to just get away with a quick flick over. If you are, like I say, great for you. <laughs> I have spent a fortune on feeds and supplements and products to try and get something to fix pepper skin. So speaking from that experience, if you have a horse that doesn't naturally glow or have a shine or whatever, these are some of the things that you could try just to see if they work for your horse. I'm pretty confident in saying that these things will help to give your horse that super shiny look. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you, you have enjoyed this video, guys. If you have, please do click the like button, leave a comment down below, tell me what you thought of everything, and be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any future uploads. Until the next one, guys. See you later. Bye.